Afternoon, Gary. Hi, Mark. Um, obviously, last week was a was a real blow for for you and the lads and and the club, having played so well at, at times at the Emirates. How much of a psychological coaching session have you had to do with the lads to pick them up? Because conceding in that in that manner in in that style, when there was so much at stake, clearly the lads would have been disappointed. Have you had to kind of lift them in a in a psychological way? You know, I think the moment in the dressing room right after it was the, the, the toughest aspect. So, yeah, speaking to the group about how I felt about the game at that moment, uh, understanding where they were emotionally from that. Um, but moving past that this week has just gone back to, yeah, Liverpool coming. So from Monday, um, the lads were ready to work, ready to go. So there was absolutely no hangover whatsoever. Um there was a review, of course, of things we could have done better uh, and how well we did to to go there and make it as close as, as it was and, and be in the game for 97 minutes or whatever we were. Um, but yeah, so that in the dressing room, making sure we, we make sure we, we know what happened out there. Um, it was a hell of an effort from everybody, as I said on the day, a real big effort. Um, not many teams, I don't think many teams at all have gone there and scored twice and... Um, and been ahead or level for 96 minutes at the Emirates this season. It was a big effort from us. Um, and then, of course, the, the disappointment at, at not getting anything from that. But, yeah, the, the lads are fine this week. We're ready to go. Another big, big side coming. Um, so full, fo full focus from Monday onwards on, on Liverpool. At one stage on Saturday, you were fifth bottom in the Premier League. You go to bed bottom of the table. What does that say about the nature of the league at the moment and how defining every single moment can be in a game to where you end up finishing? Yeah, the, the margins are so small, as you guys already know. So, yeah, the, the nature of, of every chat we have after every Saturday game with you guys changes in an instance with, with real fine margins. I think a lot of the last few games, in, including the one we won, by the way, including Wolves, fine margins at Wolves as well. So they, they can go in your favour. Um, the goal that Nottingham Forest score here where Sam Surridge last year would have been te well, was technically offside by last year's rules. Um, so the margins are tiny um, and we are, we're one point behind um, achieving what would be a, a real successful season season for us at the moment to, to stay in the Premier League would be a huge success. Um, and we're one point behind that at this moment. There's six points that separate the bottom nine. For you as someone bottom looking up, does it feel like there's nine teams in this relegation scrap and the fact that there are so many sides that are in amongst it, does that give you a belief and a confidence that you can finish outside of the bottom three? Yeah, I think yeah, it's a difficult season to sort of pick the ones that you expect to, to be right down there come the end. I think um, yeah, there is a bit of a, a mixed group there at the moment. Um, and of course, when you're in and amongst it, the more teams that are involved, the better. Um, but yeah, it is a very, very, very tight bottom of the league. So back-to-back um, -back results or a win that people don't expect you to get um, can make a, a, a big difference. Just a quick word on the lads' mentality. When you put them over the white line, it's their job to get things done. But when you have those games where you're 2-0 up against Arsenal or Tottenham or 2-1 up against Leeds and the lads don't see it out, what can you do as a manager to perhaps change that mentality or... or coach them in a different way to see a game out that they haven't been able to do this season so far? Yeah, no, I think all, all the situations are different. It's very, very easy to, to sort of club them all together and look at them as one. They're, they're very, very different. I think the the Arsenal one, the flow of the game did not change at all. They, they took three of their chances in the last half an hour and they missed them in the first hour was basically how the game went. We we frustrated them in the same way. They threw balls in the box. There was deflections. There was bodies on the line. Um, so for me, the flow of the game at Arsenal didn't change. Our game plan didn't change. Um, it's just a long time to hold Arsenal at bay. So um, and never to be good sides have a real good chance of scoring late on in a game because they, they wear you down. The people start to get tired. So um, yeah, I think the lads the lads understand. Um, they know what it takes to, to see a game out. Of course, we when we get ourselves in front, we. We try and stay positive. We try and make sure we're still a threat, as we were. You know, we were one nil up, and Dango goes through clean on goal, one v one with Aaron Ramsdale. Uh, I think Aaron Ramsdale makes a real good save from Dom late on in, in at some point in the second half. So it wasn't as if the f the game changed, and we were like, "Oh, we're two nil up. Let's just sit in front of our goal." And 
um, it was the same. Just it's difficult for 90 minutes to hold a team of that quality at bay. Up next, Liverpool in the Premier League. Everyone will immediately go back to the 9-0 the at Anfield. Um, is that the f first thing that comes to your mind or is it the unbeaten six games off the back of it when you were the caretaker manager? Yeah, no, no, yeah, the 9-0 the, the doesn't come into my mind at all. Obviously, we were in a very different place then. Um, yeah, so the, the lads will just prepare for this like it's, a, it's another game against a, a very, very good side. They're, they're in good form at the moment. Um, obviously, have fantastic attacking threat. Um, so yeah, it'll be a tough ask, of course, but no, we approach the game like it's a, a game that we need to take three points from and, and that's all. I'm presuming that you would have sat down with your laptop and your notebook watching the Liverpool-Manchester United game last week. What was going through your mind in that second half when you're seeing Liverpool demolish Manchester United knowing you've got to play them next? Yeah, a couple of things. I thought, oh, it's a, not a great time for them to hit top form. Uh, and then secondly, hopefully uh, they've used up all their goals um, was the last thing I was thinking. Um, but yeah, no, they've, they've changed a little bit recently. They're using a slightly different structure. So um, yeah, last three or four weeks, they've, they've, they've mixed things up, changed how they play. They probably haven't done that in, in quite a while, while, while Jürgen's been there. So slightly new look, um, but yeah, same sort of threat. So Salah on the top line, Nunes obviously a huge threat. Um, lots of pace up front. Um, so yeah, it, it'll be a tough ask, but boys are boys are looking forward to it again. A, an, an incredible opportunity for us to, to to give ourselves a chance of putting another big result on the board. Thank you. Okay. Can I just firstly check on injuries, Gary? Yeah. Obviously Jefferson, Hamid Troy were missing last week. Lewis Cook we saw back. Um, Marcus Tavernier. Could you update us on some of those? Yeah. So Tav will still be out. Um, Junior will still be out. Junior Traore. Uh, Jeff's touch and go. Jeff's um, not done as much as you would like, um, but he's further along than the others, so we'll make a call on Jeff tomorrow. Uh, Lewis Cook's still back, yeah, so good to have Lou still. Um, yeah, the rest should be should be fairly similar to, to where we were last week. How much is availability, I guess, dictating what how you go in these games, tactically and shape-wise? Um, yeah, I think... Yeah, we, ha we haven't had as many options as we would like tactically um, because of the injury situation, but also the yeah the calibre of team we're playing at the moment is obviously dictates a little bit tactically as well. So um, yeah, Man City, Arsenal, Liverpool as a free game run is um, not the easiest run you can have. So yeah, there's there's a few things tactically, but yeah, getting getting players back fit is is huge. So I've said it a lot this season, but it is. So we need to need to get them back as quick as we can. We got. Liverpool and Villa, and then a and then an international break, which will hopefully help us as well, um, and hopefully come out the the back end of that in a in a much stronger place numbers wise. Is that risk reward, I guess, balance something that you're continually toying with? We see Arsenal last week have eighty plus percent possession. Obviously, be camped in your half for a, a lot of the time. In terms of how you set up the risk and the reward, obviously, in games like that, are if you go too open, you're going to get picked off probably. Um, how is that proving difficult for you to? I guess decide how to go in these games. Yeah, there's there's a decision. Of course, Man City. We went very different to that. So we tried to, yeah, we tried to be front foot and aggressive and sort of disrupt their control and structure in the in the Man City game, especially with it being at home. Thought we could sort of create an energy here and make it uncomfortable for them. Whereas Arsenal, yeah, they're they're an excellent side. I didn't see us causing them a huge problem if we went front foot and energy and. I thought the, the home support and the, the nature of the game at the Emirates would mean that, that that would help them. So I felt that the best way was to, to make them go around us, make them throw balls in the box that were less controlled, have numbers around it, um, score two goals from the training ground, um, lead at the Emirates for a long time. So um, although it ends in huge disappointment, there was, yeah, there was a lot of stuff that worked very well. You obviously came here from Liverpool from the under-23s. How much did you learn from your time there? Uh, yeah, a lot, a lot. Um, yeah, fantastic club. Um, yeah, really good academy. Um, produced some fantastic players. Um, and watching the elite level that the first team work at. Um, yeah, it's an, obviously an incredible club, one of the biggest clubs in the world. So, yeah, learned a lot from, obviously started my coaching career there. So, learned a lot from the guys around it. Um, yeah, so looking forward to tomorrow. Um, obviously, was there like when we when we lost nine 0 last time, but wasn't the head coach. So um, yeah, looking forward to it.
And did you have much interaction with Jurgen Klopp there? Is there any relationship between the academy and, and him? Yeah, saw, saw him around a bit. Obviously, there was COVID at the time, so it was trickier to move between between groups. But yeah, he attended some of the games and yeah, saw him around the training ground occasionally. Yeah, that was a nice guy. was very helpful. Um, so yeah, I'm looking forward to, to going up against him tomorrow. I just find it something you mentioned with Mark about game management and defending leads and things. When does, I guess, def- losing leads become a, a concerning habit rather than just one of those things that happens occasionally? No, it's, it's, a, it's always a... Yeah, it's always a concern. You don't want to lose leads, and we, as you guys rightly say, we've we've lost three this year from from two goals in front. So, the real disappointing one for me was was Leeds, obviously, because Tottenham and Arsenal are. I mean, I remember the Tottenham one; we were fairly comfortable, and they lined about 150 million pounds worth of subs up and brought them on. That made a big difference. Um, and like I say, the Arsenal one felt they were they were strong throughout. Um, and it's hard to it's hard to do what we did for 65 minutes, let alone 90, 97. So um, the Leeds one was the disappointing one in that for me.